Our presenter for the one o'clock time slot is Rebecca Merch. She is from Nashua, New Hampshire, and will be sharing with us her capstone project, Redefine Bathroom Products for Fall Assistance and Fall Response. Please join us in welcoming her. Thank you so much, Megan. Just gonna share my screen. So thank you so much for this opportunity to share my capstone project with you guys. Um, before I begin, I would like to introduce this woman to you. Uh, this is Gail Donaldson. She is an 83-year-old retired widow, and she uses a cane due to um, hip replacement, and she also struggles with arthritis, making certain things difficult. But despite these mobility issues, she lives in a lovely apartment complex on her own, and she has owned a Labrador retriever up until two years ago. Um, I really admire her resilience and how active she is in the lives of her family and how much she loves them. And this woman just so happens to be my grandmother. And it is women and seniors like my grandma that have inspired me to tackle the project I'm going to be discussing with you today. So most people plan to age in their own homes. However, due to aging, many need assistance. And the greater they need assistance, the greater they are dependent on that, making them um, making great, the decline even greater. And this is due to the lack of physical and mental um, stimulation. And so this leads to my capstone brief, which is to design a product solution to allow senior citizens to more easily live independently. So my capstone took me on quite a journey, starting with a lot of research to help me understand the problem, and then doing brainstorming to think of different solutions, my ideation phase, which was drawing out different design ideas, and then choosing a brand to design for, and then coming up with that final design. So in summary, I'm first gonna be discussing the problem that I'm addressing, and then the overall bigger why of like why address this problem in the first place. Then continue to talk about the problem and narrow the scope of it, and then um, talk about my goals that I set out for myself, the brand I chose, and the products I designed. So first, the problem. So with my project, I really had to take a massive problem, narrow it to still a big problem, and then narrow it even more to address the one that I'm going to be talking about. So the massive overarching problem is helping the elderly more easily live on their own. So according to my research, there are a lot of unmet needs within the elderly community, and if a need is left unmet, it can cause depression or anxiety. Two out of every three Americans ages 65 and older need help with at least one daily activity, whether that be preparing a meal or getting dressed, um, getting out of the shower, anything like that. And there's also an overarching desire to age at home, which is something I mentioned at the beginning, but the statistic for that is that actually 90% of people plan to age in their own homes. And the reason people wanna stay is due to the comfort of living in a familiar place with familiar people, um, that independence aspect of wanting to be as independent for as long as you can. And also the cost of moving outside of your home can be very expensive into like a nursing home or an assisted living community. However, sometimes people have to move out. Um, this is oftentimes an unwanted move, but it might be due to the complexity of needs that person has, the cost of modifying your own home or hiring help can be expensive, and the what ifs that could happen, like emergency situations like what if I fall, what if I have a heart attack, and no one's there to help me. And so this is when I did some other design research methods to help me understand the problem. I broke down this need of assistance, but also a want for independence to help me understand that. I also tried to really understand the user, put myself in the shoes of a senior and understand what are they saying, what are they doing, thinking and feeling. And then I also did an overall brainstorm process to think about ways that I could approach this problem. And ultimately it boiled down to four different directions. Was I gonna design a product for a physical need, a mental need, revamp current products, or design a product for the what if situations? And so before I show you which direction I decided to go, I'd like to just quickly address the bigger why. And these reasons might seem obvious, but I think it's very noteworthy. First of all, quality of life. As I mentioned, 90% of people want to age in their own home. And actually, according to the American Geriatric Society, just a simple move to a nursing home causes depression of some degree in 40% of residents. So that is decreasing quality of life by having to move to a nursing home, but there's also areas to improve it while remaining at home. 
Second is comfort. And although this might seem obvious, just remaining in a, a comfortable place in um, your own home around familiar people and places. Thirdly is dignity. Aging is already a very difficult phase of life when you're seeing yourself become incapable of things you've been capable of your entire life. And stripping away independence unnecessarily is just another way to make them feel undignified. And then fourthly, avoidability. There are a lot of avoidable situations, meaning you don't have to go to a nursing home in some cases, but they're forced to. And so this is an area that I focused on in my project. So now we're gonna talk about the problem even more, but narrow the scope. So I had to take this massive problem and I decided to pursue this still big problem of a what if situation, which is oftentimes a reason for a move to a nursing home. And one of those what ifs are falls among the senior population. One in every four Americans ages 65 and older have a serious fall and 30 million fall every year leading to about 30,000 deaths. This makes falling the leading cause of injury and injury related death for the senior population. And it just causes overall health decline. There are a lot of immediate repercussions to falling like broken bones, fractures, head injuries, and so forth. I actually at one point during my project did an Instagram poll just to see how many people in just my own community knew of someone who had taken a fall and how it affected their life. And 100% of the people that responded said that the people they knew that had fallen, it affected their quality of life in some way. Uh, later repercussions can include fear, um, a fear of falling again, and 50% of people who fear falling limit their social and physical activities, meaning that this is just further perpetuating the problem of a lack of stimulation, like mental engagement or physical engagement, and this just contributes to that general downward spiral. An even sadder fact is that every second of every day, an older adult age 65 and older suffers a fall in the United States. 40% say falling is a reason to move to a nursing home and 25% say is the primary reason. The fact that a what if situation or potential risk is the main reason why someone is having to move to a nursing home, um, which is oftentimes an unwanted move, should not be the case and is something that really needs to be addressed. So this is when I began to brainstorm and ask the question, how might we minimize risk and fear of falling among seniors without compromising their independence and dignity. So I asked this question to my classmates to come up with some different design ideas and I did this myself. And ultimately I had to decide, was I gonna design for fall detection, fall prevention, or fall response? And so no matter what direction I chose, I wanted my solution to abide by these design principles, to provide assistance, preserve dignity of the user, minimize, accommodate, or prevent falling, allow for greater independence, be simple and easy to use, combat fear of falling and anxieties, integrate well into the existing environment, provide security and comfort and instill an attitude of men, um, or a mentality of capability and competence. And so this leads to the specific problem that I'm addressing, which is falling in the bathroom. And here is why. Over half of falls happen in the home and 80% of falls in the home occur in the bathroom. Most falls occur due to getting in and out of the tub or the shower, which is the main reason, but also getting up from the toilet. So this leads to the goals that I wanted to achieve with my project. First of all, I wanted to create a product line. I wanted to design two products for fall prevention and one product for fall response and really make just some functional and aesthetic changes to what's currently offered on the market. Secondly, I wanted my solution to be easily branded and marketed. Either wanted to create my own brand or pair with an existing brand. And the reason for this is that according to the World Health Organization, only one in 10 people in need have access to assistive technology due to a number of re reasons, but one of which is a lack of awareness. So I want my solution to be very easily seen and marketed. And then secondly, I wanted my products to be functional, but also aesthetically appealing. And the reason for this is that according to a study published through the Disability and Health Journal, they analyzed different groups interviewing people of all different ethnic backgrounds, and they all came to the same conclusion that mobility devices help in maintaining independence, but there's an association of mobility aid aid use with aging and physical decline, which contributed to stigmatizing attitudes. So what I thought is that an aesthetic change was necessary to try to get rid of this negative stigma. 
So this leads to the brand that I chose. And I chose to pair with a current brand. And the brand I chose was Kohler. The reason I chose Kohler was because they're a very familiar brand, so it could be easily marketed, and it's also the price point isn't terribly high for their products. This is when I designed a mood board to help me understand the essence of Kohler and also the aesthetics that I was going after in my design. So you can notice a lot of the clean lines, the smooth metallic finishes, and also it just has an overall universal de design appeal, meaning it appeals to people of different ages and backgrounds. So this is when I began to explore the Kohler website and I felt like I was online shopping for like two or three days, um, just looking at all their different design collections and products. And these are the three that I really liked the best. So I took design cues from each of them and just tried to visualize what they might look like as toilet grab bars. And I ultimately chose this third design. And the reason I chose Lure is because it, it's ge geometric look with flat surfaces, but also um, it's organic look with the rounded edges and elegant curves. So I designed another mood board just to help me understand lore and see the shapes and lines and then how they play out in that design collection, but also seen in other familiar objects. So in addition to following lore, I wanted to add a personal touch to my design, which is copper. And the main reason I chose to pursue something like copper is to have this material change hopefully to prevent that association with age and decline. As I researched into all the current products that are offered, I noticed all of them have a general hospital-like aesthetic. They're usually made of chunky white plastic or a sterile like stainless steel. So I was hoping that maybe eliminating this uh, sterile look would maybe um, help to make these products more desirable. Copper is a classic, traditional material. It's also trending in the design world today. And added benefits are it's naturally antibacterial and it's very easy to clean. All you need is soap and water. So this leads to the product line that I designed. The first product I designed was a tub transition bench. And the reason I wanted to do that was because um, falling or getting in and out of the tub is the main area where people are falling. So I had to look at my competitors and I developed this competitive set to see some of the features that are offered in current benches, stools, and chairs, um, and also maybe some disadvantages. So what I noticed is that on the bottom left, you can see these legs extend outside of the tub. So although this might be a stable design, this, these legs could create a tripping hazard. The middle, it's a very sleek looking bench design. However, if you notice, it extends the entire width of the tub, meaning you can't close your shower curtain. And then on the bottom, this looks like a stable, secure design. However, it doesn't have any height adjustability feature, meaning someone of a taller frame would have a hard time squatting down to that height. And then the red box around all of them just is pointing to the fact that they all, again, have that same hospital-like sterile look to them. So I kept these things in mind when coming up with my own tub bench design. And I had to explore the stability feature and I looked at something like a camera tripod legs and how those function. I also wanted to do a change in shape, have some sort of height adjustability feature. And then I really focused on that extension part, which you can see on the bottom left, that highlighted sketch there, just exploring ways on how to make a part that can be extended out to transition into the tub and out of the tub. So this is when I um, reached my refinement stage. These three designs are all very similar, but they have different mechanisms for that extension piece. I prototyped all of them in foam core and ended up choosing the final design or the third design shown here. And the reason for that is because it's just very easy to use. All you have to do is fold it up and fold it back out. And it does, it eliminates finickiness of additional metal parts and hard to clean areas. So this is just a storyboard of how this product would be used. So once it's in its extended position, the person would just sit on the edge of it and then literally just slide, put their leg over the edge of the tub. And um, once they're in that dip down seat area, they can uh, fold that transition piece back up using the underside handle and then close the shower curtain. So this is a rendering of what that design would look like. So its features include the dip down seat, 
um, which I mentioned at the beginning, but this was really to try to eliminate use of like rough textured plastics, which are hard to use, but still make sure that this tub felt secure. It also has some security handles on both sides with that copper finishing and then that copper finish along the edge, just to give it a more elegant look. And then for the legs, they're very easily adjustable. All you need is that flip lock mechanism to adjust the height. And then all of the feet are individually movable to adjust to the curvature of whatever your tub shape is. And then on the right, that's just some added support so that when you're sitting on that transition seat, the bench doesn't kick up on the other end. So here are just some additional views of each of those um, of the tub bench. And then so on the left is the side view and then the top view and the folded position and then the underside view. So you can take a look at the mechanism of the legs. So this is what it might look like inside of the bathroom. So next is my toilet grab bar design. And the whole goal with this design was just to create a more aesthetically pleasing design. Looking at my competitive set, there are a lot of different ways you can attach bars, whether it's to the floor, the wall, or directly to the toilet. But all of them, again, have that same hospital-like aesthetic and are generally cylindrical in nature. So I wanted my bar design to not be as cylindrical um, and more square and then have that copper finishing and then also have some sort of hook to hold your toilet paper. So in my refinement stage, I ultimately chose a design that really mimics that lure curve as seen in their design collection. And it's very easy to install. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about next. So in this part of my storyboard, this is showing how the grab bar would be installed. I was looking at ways to make it easier and eliminate having to drill holes in your wall and your floor. And I stumbled across this German mechanism called Nivida Boren, which means no drilling required. So instead you're adhering this pad to the wall or the floor um, with an adhesive backing and then squeezing this epoxy sealant glue to create that really tight seal, letting it dry for 24 hours. And then you screw directly into the padding instead of the wall or the floor. So it just makes it a lot easier to install. So that's how the bottom of the bar would function. And then the top is very similar, um, except it's eliminating screws altogether. So instead I designed this attachment piece that you adhere to the wall. And then once that's done, it has notches on the top. So you can just literally rest the top of the bar into those notches. So this is just the rest of my storyboard showing how these bars uh, would work and the scale of them, and then that easily accessible toilet paper holder. So this is a rendering of that design, and this is just showing how that no drilling mechanism works. So again, the features of the no drilling mechanism method, the accessible toilet paper holder, which if you notice, kind of curves up at the end to prevent the paper from just sliding off, and then it has those rounded edges and copper finish. And this is what it might look like inside of a bathroom. So finally, my fall response device, which is a combination of using a fall sensor and an emergency button. So I had to look at current technology. There's a lot of different emergency buttons out there. Um, I've seen on the left, this company, Medical Guardian. And then the middle um, is a recent innovation by Apple, which has a fall detection technology software inside of the Apple Watch. Um, so basically when you fall, it uses a gyroscope to detect your balance and impact and this screen can pop up. And then on the right is through a familiar company, Life Alert. And this is specifically the shower help button, which can be easily attached inside of the, ba the bathroom near the shower so that if you have an emergency, you can press for help. So looking at these, I did have to identify some disadvantages with them to improve my design. So on the far left, this, these emergency buttons can often be forgettable since they're wearables. Um, they're not very dignifying. You're literally calling out that you're at a potential risk. So people don't usually want to wear something like this. And then thirdly, they're not very bathroom friendly. So even though they can be made of waterproof materials, you don't really want to wear a pendant or a watch inside the shower. With the Apple Watch, it doesn't actually detect all falls. It's can be oftentimes inaccurate. I actually watched a YouTube video of a guy literally throwing himself on the ground and this screen never popped up even once. Um, it's not also not very user friendly for seniors. Um, in my interviews with seniors, they describe technology as being scary, intimidating, and complicated. So even for someone 
who has grown up with technology might think it's simple. It's really not for someone in this age category. And then thirdly, again, it's not bathroom friendly wearing an expensive watch in the shower. And then the shower help button is close to what I kind of want to go after in my design, but it's not aesthetically appealing and it's not helpful for all fall situations. For example, if you're not unconscious. So I took these considerations into mind when I was drawing out ideas. I really wanted a very accessible emergency button that is close to the floor. So it's eliminating that barrier of having to get up to press or call for help. And then I also explore the idea of a sensor of some sort that could detect a person on the floor and a call an emergency contact or medical personnel for you. And so this is when I started to reach out to some of my professors and my classmates and ran into Xbox Connect technology. Um, Tom Balliott pointed this out and said, hey, this actually might be applicable to what you're trying to do. And as I began to research this and understand how this works, I thought it really might be. So if you don't know how Xbox Connect works, it uses infrared camera technology and 3D image processing to basically see your shape or your figure and you instead are the controller in this instance in a gaming environment. And although this wasn't necessarily very successful in the gaming community, it does have many applications like the one I'm going after. So this is how Xbox Connect sees you. On the left is the infrared camera and then the right is the RGB camera. And if you notice, the RGB camera really doesn't detect a lot of detail. So for the fear of having a camera in your bathroom, you notice that it's really just detecting general shapes. So I thought, how about this could be coded to detect your shape on the floor as a fall and then it could be coded to contact an emergency for you. So this is just a general concept that I hope could potentially be applicable. So then I began to um, draw out some ideas. On the left is how that sensor camera might look. And then on the right is that just more aesthetically appealing looking emergency button to put close to the floor. So for my sensor concept, um, this is kind of looking like more retro design, but still having that copper feature. And it was suggested by an engineer that Tom reached out to, to include something like a privacy cover. So the camera could still see through the privacy cover, but it, you still feel a little bit more secure with having a camera in your bathroom, even though there's technically a camera in your bathroom. It just gives that sense of privacy still. So this is how those two um, pieces of technology would interact. Um, so on the left is a picture of what the button looks like, which I'll show you renders in just a moment. Um, so if someone had fallen on the first square, um, then you can see that the um, sensor camera would detect that person on the floor. And if you're not knocked unconscious, it, you could speak voice commands to it and it could reach an emergency contact or medical personnel for you. And then just as a safeguard, just in case this sensor does happens to not work or this concept really might not be applicable, um, there's that button design as well. And it's just attached right on the baseboard of your wall so you can just slide over to press. So this is a rendering of what the button could look like. It's just very simple, one big call button and then a smaller cancel button just in case you happen to press it by accident. And then on the left is a rendering of what the button could look like in your bathroom. It's not too big, but it's big enough that it's obvious. And then on the right, the top right is a picture of the back. It's literally just attachable with command strips, so it's very easily removed and placed somewhere else. So this is my product collection, the tub transition bench, toilet grab bar, and the emergency help button all together. The first two really mimic that lore brand language, but all three are tied together with the copper details. And this is what it might look like if Kohler were to sell it. It would be creating an assistive device design line for them. So in summary, we looked at the problem of um, senior citizens wanting to live on their own but needing assistance. The bigger why of trying to improve their quality of life and then looking at the more specific problem of falling, particularly in the bathroom. Then we looked at the goals and I hope I achieved a more aesthetically appealing product design line that is easily branded and marketed through Kohler and all three products together. So thank you so much. Um, although I don't claim to solve for the entire problem of falling, I do hope that this is just one step in the right direction towards eliminating the what if situations to help senior citizens have a better quality of life. Thank you so much. Great job, Rebecca. I have a few questions here already. 
One is, uh, what is the hole in, for in the top of the grab bar? Yeah, so I didn't mention that, but if you notice, I don't know if you can see it well in this render, but on the top of the grab bar, this is just an additional feature. You could add like a little shelf just to make your grab bar feel less like a grab bar, bar and more like an artistic piece. So you could put like a plant or a picture on top of it. Great. Do you plan on expanding your product sets to address other potential falling hazards throughout the home? Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely see this as, I mean, a very broad category. This is just tapping into it a little bit. And um, yeah, I really love to explore other products as well. With the grab bar being squared off more, did you look into the ergonomics and grip of how the change would affect how comfortable uh, it would be to grab with arthritis and joint pains? Yeah, so I did think about that. And that's probably why a lot of designs are cylindrical. Um, I made sure I wanted to fill at the edges or around the edges and also the radius of it is this same like ADA compliant which is I think uh, one and a quarter inches at least so that would be it would still be about the right size. The glue used for the toilet bars uh, do you think that's going to be strong enough to support a fall? Um, in terms of if you're grabbing the bar while you're falling? Uh, I believe so, yeah. So with the German design, it is intentionally designed for grab bars um, in particular. So this glue would definitely be strong enough. Uh, is the emergency call button battery powered or would it have to be close to a socket and plug into the wall? If battery powered, would that be dangerous if it runs out of battery? Yeah, so I explored that a little bit. And I wanted to avoid it being plugged into the wall. And I, so I decided to go the battery route and looking into companies like Life Alert, their batteries last like five years. So we wouldn't be worried about that. And then additionally, I still have that sensor camera technology as a backup as well. So that could potentially contact emergencies for you. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, fantastic job. Uh, and then he asks, if you had more time or didn't have COVID restrictions, what else would you have done? Yeah, um, I really would have liked to make a full scale model of my tub bench to test its stability and maybe some other materials. That's probably what I really would have explored. And had you been able to prototype, you might uh, be able to answer this question even better. But um, someone asked, do you have an idea of what the weight of the tub bench is? I don't have a specific number for that. I did decide to go with more lightweight materials, which is why I didn't go with like an entirely metal design. So it would be plastic and like lightweight aluminum for the legs, but I don't have a specific number for um, the weight of the bench. Sure. But you were thinking that people could, if they needed to remove this out of the tub uh, and, and place it back in if they needed to, correct? Yeah, definitely. It's very easy to, put in and take out yeah and it looks like those legs uh, do the legs fold at all or do they just adjust to account for tub sizes they fold a little bit they kind of work like table legs on like those plastic tables um, like I mentioned this is like a camera tripod like type of system so they are attached to these cylinders inside of that metal frame underneath so they can be adjusted to whatever width the tub is so they do fold to an extent yeah okay great I think that just about does it for the questions. Uh, everyone, if you would mind, wouldn't mind joining me and congratulating Rebecca using either the reaction button or just showing your appreciation on the screen. Rebecca, great job.